Howdy guys and welcome to Cliff Notes and welcome to night number 70 of the overnight feed recaps for Big Brother season 26. A good Friday to y'all. TGIF. All right. We had the season's double eviction episode last night. Always exciting. Now we we lost Leah, went out the door first. No huge surprise there, right? She was <laughs> she was fudge. Struggled through her uh her, her little uh plea, her speech, eviction speech a little bit, but uh sad to see Leah gone. She was quite the uh, entertainment in the house, but we lost Leah, no huge surprise there. Followed later in the night by Angela heading out the door. Not a huge surprise, although I will say I think Mackenzie needs to be thanking her lucky stars that it was Angela, not her. I don't think Mackenzie's going to realize till she gets out of the house just how close it could have been uh, her heading out on the devil last night. But it wasn't. It was Leah and Angela heading out the door. Those two are going to be a whirlwind over in the jury house, right? We haven't seen any clips from the jury house. I expect we'll see them now that, that you got four folks over there hanging out. And oh, Quinn and, Quinn and Angela get to hang out for another week or so. I'm sure they'll be looking forward to that. It's there. I think jury house didn't go myself but based on talking to people i think once you get over there you get rid of the stresses of the game of big brother and all that everyone's gonna get along they'll have a blast over there uh but we lost leah we lost angela we're down to our final five right who who picked those those five to be final five i've probably not a lot of people but those are our final five it's going to be an interesting uh next couple of weeks as we see how this all resolves out all right before we talk about the live feeds I was excited to see that the veto competition during the double eviction was the ball rolling competition that I competed in when I won and, and battled my way back into the house. Always cool to, to bring back some of those old memories and all of that, except I will mention that the uh, that their competition, their veto had very large rails around every curve as they were rolling these balls. Mine didn't have that. Yeah. You had to have a lot more finesse to keep the balls from rolling off. They, they had a lot of rails to help them out, but I still enjoyed watching it. Props to Chemo uh, for, for winning and pulling himself uh, off the block. All right, let's talk about the feeds. Let's talk about the new HOH that we have in the house. Uh, we got the feeds back around, I don't know, but around nine o'clock or so big brother time. Uh, it was not slip and slide. I kind of thought it was, but not slip and slide. We got the feeds back around nine o'clock big brother time. And discover that the new HOH is Mackenzie. Yes, Mackenzie. Get it seems like it's two weeks in a row because Chelsea was only HOH there for the period of the, the live show. But Mackenzie is HOH this week. So the big question: who does Chelsea want out this week? Because she's kind of really the de facto HOH, right? Yeah, not taking away from, from Mackenzie. Uh, but yeah, Chelsea did have a hand last week but chelsea uh mckenzie is is the hoh for the for the week uh and the big question is who's going up on the block well it seems pretty straightforward right now rabina and chemo going up right you would think so and as it turns out that probably is the case if one of them wins veto then the other one uh goes a uh, cam probably goes up uh, and the other person of chemo and rabina then goes home we had some discussions that we'll talk about uh on the live feeds last night uh but here's a little question for you what if mj if if uh rabina or chemo wins veto pulls himself off what if mckenzie instead of putting up cam put up chelsea at that point in time if you put up chelsea now suddenly you've got either chemo or rabina voting out chelsea because they're not going to send out their their partner right you've got cam voting out either chemo or rabina who's on the block mckenzie at that point in time then breaks the tie Talk about a big resume move. If you were to send Chelsea out the door uh, right then and there and have a final four of yourself and Cam and Rabina and Chemo, seems like it would put McKenzie in an incredibly strong position. Now, I don't think she's going to do that because I think she feels too much of a connection with Chelsea, but I'm just saying, ju just mentioning that as a possibility. Uh, and, and we did have some discussions about who would go up as a renom. So let's get into the live feeds. Now, the... The HOH itself was an HO was an HOH version of the tiny veto comp that we've seen before, where everyone's using tweezers to to lean in and uh, 
stack uh, stacks. I mean, we don't know what they were stacking this time. In the past, it's been little cans and things like that. S- stacking something a little tiny. Mackenzie got a little tiny key, uh, just like you normally get a little tiny veto. Uh, so we haven't heard the details, but some kind of stacking with tweezers. As I mentioned a second ago, I really thought this could be slip and slide. It seemed like this was the last chance to do it. At this point, I don't think we're going to get slip, slip and slide this year. I just don't think with, with five people less, left in the house, uh, we'll be down to four next time. McKenzie can't compete. I don't think they'll do a slip and slide with just three people. So I think slip and slide, for whatever reason, just didn't going to show up on season 26. I kind of think the next competition, HOH comp, is going to be the one where everyone's hanging from the rope, standing on the disc, and getting slammed into some kind of barricade or something. Oh, we'll see. Uh, but we've got that. All right, now let's talk about the feeds. I kind of uh, had a lot of things to talk about. All right, on to the feeds. Uh, we do see McKenzie back. It uh, didn't take long to figure out that she'd won it. You didn't even need to see a tiny key around her neck. Just the way McKenzie is standing up and smiling, looking very happy. Chelsea looks decently happy. Everyone else is kind of like, mm, mm, eh, mm. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious that Chelsea was in a bunch, uh, that uh, and, uh, McKenzie was in a much better mood than anyone else. And as it turns out, she did win the HOH. Now, Chelsea was HOH for a few hours uh, between uh, between uh, McKenzie's reigns. So, Chelsea did get an HOH basket as well. She doesn't get music. She doesn't get the HOH room, but she did get a basket. She got a letter. Uh, she got a letter from her brother. Uh, she got pictures, additional pictures from her family. She did have also, and they were looking at this down in the living room area. Uh, she did mention after that, she went into the uh, that rock bedroom, had did one of her little Chelsea camera talks. Uh, she's mentioned during her camera talk that during the tiebreaker with Angela, that she actually left a uh, a zero off of her response. I think she said 1,080, which was like 18 minutes that Janky had been uh, in the backyard with them instead of... 10,080, which would have been right about on, on target as far as the, the actual answer. Uh, so it almost it could have been a huge mistake on Chelsea's part. Turned out not to matter anyway. She won, she won the HOH no matter what because Angela guessed a week and a half or so that Janky had been outside with them. What? We all know at this point in time in Big Brother, if you have to do a tiebreaker, it's probably going to be something along the lines of how long in seconds or how long in minutes did such and such last take place, et cetera. Why do these house guests not memorize how many minutes are in a day, how many seconds are in an hour in a day, et cetera. It's just a couple of numbers that would make it so much easier on these tiebreaker questions. Uh, They just don't always seem to be prepared for the tiebreakers the way I think they should be. But she does mention she left off a of zero. It turns out it didn't matter because Angela went above, went over the uh, the answer anyway. So Chelsea uh, won that thing, and uh, very excited about being uh, a final five and and all that. She did say that she wanted Angela out because everyone who sits next to Angela goes home. Chelsea did not want to get into a situation where she was potentially sitting next to Angela, uh, and she went. Uh, home as well so she she very much did want Angela out the door as opposed to McKenzie leading up to this I wasn't so sure about that but yeah she wanted Angela out uh rereading at one point her old HOH letter from her first HOH from her letter from her parents and she pointed out that they specifically said no showmances so officially she hadn't had a showmance right I mean she's kind of tiptoed around it with Cam but but no showmance uh, very, very limited showmances in the house this season. Uh, even Rubina and Tucker seems like that was a hundred years ago. All right. We do have everyone at one point cleaning out all the food from the storage room and the, the fridge milk. That's a few days past due and things like that. It might be that kind of week. Uh, you start getting a little, uh, uh, a little lacking for content sometimes when, when you've got this few people, uh, and not just this few people, but strategy and plans. There's there's only so many scenarios you can look at uh, when you start having this this small number of people. So it may be a little bit of a slow week, but but we shall see. But they they did clean out the storage room and the fridge. Uh, we do have Chemo and Rubina trying on Mackenzie's hair extensions. I, I guess I, her extra hair that she had attached. Uh, it actually looked pretty good on Rubina. Chemo, not not so much. But they were having fun trying on her 
her hair extensions and all that. All right, we did actually have a little bit of strategy talk last night. A little bit. Uh, we've got Chemo and Rubina talking to each other. Chemo is scared. He said, I'm really nervous what's going to happen this week. And Rubina says, well, <laughs> we are kind of the obvious choices, Chemo. I mean, you know, it is what it is at this point in time. Uh, they suspect that the upcoming veto comp, which should be on Saturday, uh, is going to be BK, BB Comics. They are correct. Uh, that's exactly what it's going to be. Chemo is talking about how how to win it, and being the the comp B city is. I hope I hope Rubin is paying attention. Uh, now he's he's saying that he thinks that you should that you should go up, uh, do the zip line sixteen times, and every time you do it, focus on only a single picture. Make sure you've got it in the right order, and that you recognize the differences. And that way you can just take 16 times. You won't make a mistake. You'll win it. Got to disagree uh, on that one. I, I don't think that's the, the path to victory. And Nicole Anthony, who won my season, uh, her strategy, and she won. So I, I think that's, that there's some validity to it. She said what she did and what she planned to do was work on the order first. Try to remember like three, four, five, without anything about the details. Just remember the order make sure all the orders set up, then go back and start working on, on the differences. I tried to combine it. I tried to look at the first two or three, look at the order and the differences and build them in little groups. Nicole won, so maybe her system works better. But yeah, I don't think doing one at a time is necessarily going to work for chemo, but he may prove us wrong. He may beat the all-time record for BB Comics and, uh, and just dominate for the next few weeks. He might, oh, and he might not. All right, but he's telling King, uh, Rubina how he thinks the uh, the BB comics uh, should be handled. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what these comics are going to be for the 16 house guest. All right, so they're, they're a little bit worried as they should be. We've got McKenzie and Chelsea, meanwhile, talking. Uh, Chelsea saying, look, we should be able to make it to the final two at this point. You should be able to, right? Unless you start getting too nervous about the other person, but... In terms of competitions, certainly these two dominate the other three, right? I mean, add up all their comp wins versus the other three, and it, there's no comparison. So you would think from a purely competition standpoint, yes, there's a wide open path to the final two for Chelsea and McKenzie. <laughs> the big question, though, do they want to take each other? Is someone going to have a tough choice to make somewhere down the road? And, and we don't know that just yet. But Chelsea's saying they can make it to the final two. She's saying, look, next week, next week, McKenzie, you can't compete. I'm going to be competing against Cam and Rabina. Uh, so it sounds like chemo's the plan to send out the door this week because she's saying, I'm going to be competing ex- against Cam and Rabina for HOH. That should be something I could win, right? I, you would think. But remember this, the HOH, if you win this next HOH, it guarantees you a spot in the final three. But it's actually the veto winner who decides who goes home, who does not make the final three. Uh, so really this week, there's more power in the veto in some ways than there is in the HOH. But uh, but but Chelsea's saying, I should be able to win the HOH, which would get her spot into the final three at that point in time. And then, then they battle it out to see who has to head out the door. Uh, McKenzie's wondering if Chemo or Rubina were to win veto, should she put Chelsea up so that they don't look like a threatening duo instead of putting Cam up saying, Hey, I, you know, maybe I could put you up and then people won't think we're as tight as we are. Well, if I'm Chelsea, I'm a little bit worried about that. If for no other reason, the scenario I just mentioned at the beginning of, of the recap that the kids, he could do something a little sneaky, but even beyond that, at this point in time, does it really matter? Is there really that much that you have to hide from other people? Maybe a little bit, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know if it's as big an issue as they're making out to be. But McKenzie is wondering if maybe just to try to keep the cover up a little bit about their their relationship, put up uh, Chelsea instead, just to make sure. Uh, they're talking a little bit about the tiny uh, HOH comp that they just did. Apparently, Cam came in second and didn't do great, but he did a lot better than Chemo and Rabina. They're talking about that those two are just horrible at that competition and they just barely had anything stacked up. Uh, apparently McKenzie won this thing dominated uh, yet again, another competition that no one else did great. Chemo and Rubina in particular just didn't really have it going on this particular evening. Uh, we've got Chemo at one point wondering if they are allowed back in the house after finale night. 
I can answer that question. They say, no, I don't think so. I can answer that question. No, you are not allowed back in the house. After my season, we did backyard interviews. I ask at that time, say, hey, can I just go say goodbye inside the house real quick? Not Cliff, no one goes back in. Uh, from the second I walked out and talked to Julie, not a, not a second back in the house. No one gets to go back in. Even the winners, the final two, once they're out, that's it. There, there's no, there's no go backs after the season. Uh, so yeah, no chemo and enjoy your time while you still can. Cause once you're gone, you're gone. All right. We did have eventually Chelsea had already gotten her HOH basket. McKenzie gets her HOH room. Uh, she gets picked uh, pictures of her parents, her, her brother. She gets a letter from her brother as well. that She's reading out and just the standard food and wine and things like that. Her music. She did get a uh, some country music. She got an album from uh, George Strait. Uh, I happened to get uh, an album from George Strait when I won HOH as well. So, yeah, a little, little connection there with the uh, the old Texas Aggies and the music we listen to. So she got George Strait. That'll keep her happy for this next week. All right, we've got Mackenzie and Rabina talking. Mackenzie saying, "Look, uh, let's just chat in the morning. We've seen these house guests." every week doing all their one-on-ones as soon as they get their rooms, even before they get the rooms. Mackenzie's telling Rubina, said, look, let's just chat in the morning. It's not going, I'm not going to need much time. It's not going to take long. We'll just chat then. We know what's going to happen. Chemo and Rubina are going on the block. I don't think anyone suspects anything but that. So not a lot of conversation to be had, but they'll go through the motions anywhere. And Mackenzie says, let's just do it in the morning. We'll be fine. All right, we've got Mackenzie and Chelsea decide to take a uh, bubble bath in the HOH bathroom. Cam volunteers to to take a bath with them and is is rejected from that. Now, that'd be an interesting trio sitting in that tub, right? But now it's just Mackenzie and, and Chelsea taking a, a bubble bath uh, in there. While they're in there, a little strategy talk. They're talking about a scenario where chemo wins uh, potentially, uh, but uh, the veto, but Rubina wins the next. Uh, uh, Got my notes a little bit. Oh, I think where chemo goes home, but Rubina wins the next HOH. And they're figuring if that was the case. So chemo's gone. It's just Rubina, Chelsea, McKenzie, and Cam. And they're saying if Rubina was to win that, they're figuring that Rubina would would maybe keep the women. So she'd be gunning for sending Cam out the door. Well, again, as I mentioned before, it's not about who wins HOH, it's who wins veto. Uh Rubina, if she wins HOH unless she wins veto also uh she she doesn't necessarily get to say but uh but theoretically if rubina won the veto would she send cam out the door in the interest of this women's alliance that, that's been talked about uh, so they are talking about what happens if rubino was to win uh, hoh they're agreeing that this week if chemo was to win veto uh it pull himself off the block then at that point rubina needs to go home but they're also agreeing that at final three they, they both want two women to be there at the end. So I can't remember if it's Chelsea telling McKenzie or vice versa, but one says, hey, if, if we make final three, you're not sending me out and taking Cam, right? And the other one said, no, and, and you're not doing it either, right? So they've agreed that neither one is going to take Cam to final two with them. They're going to make sure uh, they take each other to the end because they want two women. Easy to say now. We'll see if that's still the case. Uh, come uh, come finale night, but but it, it certainly is a possibility. I will say this personal opinion of the five people left in the house: McKenzie and Chelsea are the two who deserve to be at the final two. Doesn't mean they'll be the two there there, but I think that's who's most deserving. All right, Chelsea is mentioning to Chel uh, to McKenzie saying, "Look, if you make it to final two, you win this thing." Yeah, McKenzie, uh, look at your resume. You you will win this if you make it to the final two. Now, if I'm McKenzie, that's going to worry me a little bit. Do you really want someone who is that certain that you're going to win the whole thing, uh, potentially making the decision about whether to take you with them to a to final two or not? Uh, be a little bit ner- ner- nervous about it. But uh, she does mention that to uh, to McKenzie. Uh, Chelsea also is asking McKenzie, because McKenzie says, well, I don't know what I'd say in a final two speech. And Chelsea says, well, if you're asked, what, what was your biggest game move uh, this season? What would you say? Uh don't give up that information, McKenzie. This could be a three quarters of a million dollar situation. Uh, don't be giving out information to your potential final two opponent who may use that information against you to try to downplay it or claim credit or sell. Who knows? Uh, so, so don't give up any of that type of information. But she does. Uh, McKenzie says, well, I don't know. Maybe I'd 
mentioned sending Leah home, uh, which if she does that, Chelsea's going to say that was all my doing. I manipulated McKenzie into doing that. So d- don't be using that as your game move. She says, or maybe when I won BBAI Arena, uh, that one instead. It's a long time ago. I'm not sure that counts as well. Eventually, Chelsea does mention, I think, what's probably going to be McKenzie's biggest argument of you won when you needed to win. Not when you wanted to win. You won when you needed to win, and you did that a lot. I think McKenzie's argument of Final Two should be she she did. She won to survive, and she was very much a lone wolf from the very beginning after week two or whatever, uh, and, and had to fight through being a solitary person for so long in the game. I think those would be her arguments, but... Uh, she she has talked about that a little bit with Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea is saying that if McKenzie hadn't beat Tucker in that BBAI arena that the competition they were talking about, it could have been a very different season because then Tucker would not have gone home at that time. Uh, and she's saying Tucker would have taken Chemo and Rubina to the end as the final three if he was still in the house, still had, still had control and could, could do that. Uh, so they're talking about that. Interesting as well. They're talking a little bit about some of the past house guests. McKenzie mentions that Tucker ate food while he was a have-not. Uh, and Chelsea then says, well, Joseph did the same thing. He ate food when he was a have-not also. And they're both wondering how they got away with it, saying, well, I guess the cameras weren't on them. I wasn't aware of that this season. We had during my season uh, uh, a person, uh, Jackson Mickey, who uh, apparently ate well, I have not, and I thought that was very unfair uh, once I found out. I, this is probably the same case, too. If that truly is the case, and there's have-nots that are eating, Big Brother either needs to just go ahead and get rid of have-nots, or they need to actually start putting some punishments out there, because you, you can't have in-between. It kind of irritated me when I uh, when I heard that. All right, more conversations. We've got Mackenzie wondering what to tell Chemo if she puts him up on the block. Does it matter at this point in time? Just say, look, I only have four people to choose from it's a 50 50 chemo and it is what it is who's going to be surprised but she's wondering what to tell chemo uh chelsea is thinking that mckenzie could potentially nominate chemo and cam as part of a girls alliance she's saying look if if you put the two guys up then rubina is not going to suspect anything and maybe that helps us cover up the fact that we're all connected the way we are uh, and McKenzie saying that she doesn't want to do that because she does not want to to risk Cam. There's a much bigger reason that McKenzie absolutely should not be wanting to do that uh, and that Chelsea shouldn't want her to do that. Here's the issue. If you don't put up Chemo and Rubina together, if you do what Chelsea suggested, put up Chemo and Cam, there is a possibility that that uh, if you've got uh, Chemo and Cam up there, there's a possibility if Rubina wins veto, she then pulls chemo off the block, which means that McKenzie has no choice except to then put up Chelsea or Cam on the block. And then suddenly you've got Rabina and chemo as the two votes that decide who goes out the door. So if McKenzie does not put up Rabina and chemo, there is a path where she could lose either Cam or Chelsea, which I, I don't think is what McKenzie wants to do now she wanted to get really fancy do something like that and maybe Chelsea goes out the door and you aren't necessarily the one who's blamed for it you blame it on Rubina and Chemo instead maybe but that's getting a little fancy I I think it's a little a little more involved than they need to be yeah no if you really want Chemo and Rubina up you've got to put both of them up together you can overwork uh, these scenarios at this point in the game to the point that you you kind of screw yourself over so hopefully that's not the case but uh anyway they they do talk about that a little bit uh mckenzie is saying that if she wins veto uh she maybe would use it on rabina at that point in time and put up cam so that rabina thinks that it's all about the girls alliance so then she can say hey rabina you know I, i put the two guys up at the end she uh chelsea would still control one of the votes so could still then vote out chemo uh mckenzie could still be the tiebreaker send chemo out the door so potentially no actual risk to cam but cover it up just a little bit longer uh, for rubina and make her think it's still about the girls alliance the idea being that then if rubina did win veto the following week maybe she does send cam out instead of chelsea or mckenzie in the interest of girls and and all of that uh, mckenzie is pointing out that now with her her latest victories 
She now has eight comp wins as compared to Janelle, who has seven. Uh, she's saying, I, that's not enough, though. I want nine. I want 10. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what her opportunity, how many possible she could get. But she's realizing that she has absolutely won a lot of competitions. And given who is still left in the house, I expect that number to go up a little bit more. Uh, Chelsea is pointing out, that she wanted people working with her that were not messy. And that's why she eventually picked up McKenzie and Cam for her group. A little bit of a hint at her jury speech. I think we'll see Chelsea saying, I assembled a team that you know I could work with and that, that you know, I, I put them together. It was my group. I'm the one that ran this group and all that. I, I think that's going to be her approach at a final two. Uh, Chelsea's going to have a lot. Uh, to, to talk about things that she did. Unlike McKenzie, who may be struggling on game moves, I think Angela, uh, I keep saying it, I think Chelsea's got a lot uh, that she'll be able to talk about. Uh, there's finally some talk about Leah and wh- what lies she was telling about who she would have voted at during the season. McKenzie saying, I, she kept saying she wouldn't have voted me out when it was up against Tucker and all that. She's, I know she's lying. Leah's gone. It doesn't really matter at this point in time, but, but they spent a little time talking about past house guests, uh, specifically Leah and where she was being true, where she wasn't being true, that they both saw through a lot of her stuff and, 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 and why it was right to get Leah out the door. There you have it guys, everyone in, in bed by three 30 or so. I think uh, McKenzie finally was the last one up, uh, went to bed with a Bible in one hand and a glass of wine in the other and uh, enjoying life uh, for, for the next few days. So they have everyone in bed by three 30 today, Friday, we should have nominations, which is going to be just an almost non-event chemo and Rubina should go up. No one will be surprised. No one will be upset. It is what it is. And then we should have the BB competition tomorrow. And that will be a, a, a lot of fun. If she plays her cards, right. It probably doesn't really matter who wins that competition. It should be Chemo or Rubina heading out the door. Uh, and so it, it could be a little bit of a chill week. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, we'll see. Guys, have a fantastic Friday. Uh, and enjoy your weekend. I'll be back tomorrow morning to give you a recap on the nominations. And if there's any kind of chaos, I'll, I'll be here to bring it. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what these house guests do over the next 24 hours to keep themselves entertained, amused, and all that. I, I, I hope we don't get any more Big Brother music. Uh, Let's not have the vacuum of Angela and Leah not being in the house, uh, creating more opportunities for for Big Brother singing. If so, it may be a quick recap because I won't be listening. Guys, y'all have a great Friday. I'll talk to y'all more tomorrow morning. Until then, SKD 143. Cheers, my friends. Bye.